everybody. Hope you're all doing well. Well, we're still on the uh, dove heads, and what I've done, I told you guys in the last video that I was modifying the floor, and I was actually on a fear factor not to do much more to it because what was happening is the fuel was actually starting to act how I wanted to act under test conditions. In the real world, in the engine, pulling the fuel through is going to be different, especially at more valve lift. And when you do it like this here, you're just getting a base idea where things are happening. I'll put it to you that way, fellas. There's nothing exact about what I'm doing here. I know that that it gives me an idea. It gives me a clue. And the only reason I get a little bit excited about this test is it's a known fact that the 460s do empty off on one side. When I simulate this test, it, it empties out on one side, just like it does under real conditions that other people smarter than me <laughs> have tested. So, if it's emptying out on the side under this condition that I'm testing it in, and then it's emptying out better under the conditions I'm testing in, and then I gotta show you guys this. Don't get bored with this test, fellas, because I'm almost finished with it. This is about it. Uh, hang on, guys. I'm lifting the stand. Sorry. This is about it for this test because of this reason. I don't think I'm going to get this pattern any better than while I have it right here. The bowl's clean on the roof. And the floor has a nice wide pattern and it's emptying out where I want it and even on the short side it's even basically even that's hard to get I seen a few spots in here that I was gonna go for and I actually found out that one of the high peaks that I left here where I didn't blend it in yet is actually helping that fuel stay where I want it to stay <laughs> so that's saving me some work. I would have been grinding on that. If it wasn't for this test, I would have been grinding grinding on that. Sorry, guys. I'm out here breathing in stuff. And uh, that would have thrown me off, fellas, if I didn't bother doing this test with the Dicom. And I think I had this about as good as I'm going to get it. I would like to raise the port a little bit more for fuel speed purposes but what if I do that and I know some guys are going to say that wouldn't work anyway but I have my own theories on stuff guys but I'm after this fellas and this is what I was after I have it I'm calling it quits I just wanted to show you guys this before I move on because what's happening guys I'm actually at a dead spot in these heads right now because I wanted to show you fellas this before I moved on and uh, most people would just hammer at something and get it done and I'd like to be able to do that but I just feel like I'm leaving you guys in the dark if I do that I want to be able to show you as much as possible what I've learned or what I haven't learned if you guys like it if you don't like it at least you have something to go by. At least you have an idea of something you might not have an idea about. You guys might have a better way of testing stuff. You don't have to go by my uh, homemade way here, fellas. This is just what I'm doing for myself. It's what I have. And uh, I hope it acts the same when I get it on that running engine. Because none of this stuff, flow test... Dino test is never the same as being on a running engine 
in a 4,000 pound vehicle, depending on what gear, what cam, uh, a lot of other factors, fellas. Anybody that's in the race and know what they are, I don't need to get down the list. There's probably 10. But, uh, yeah, guys, I'm going to hammer at these now. I'm not going to keep boring you with this test, but I did want to show you from the last time I did this, because I probably forgot to mention at the beginning of this segment, I cleaned the bowl all back out and took all the old testing uh, dike amount and redid this. So, I get ahead of myself, fellas. If I didn't say that already, you guys got to bear with me. I go brain block all the time, fellas. But, uh, I hope I'm not leaving something out here, guys, because you're never sure if you're doing the right thing. I will say this. Hang on, guys. I'm going to move this down so you can see this other port here that I'm talking about. They have a ridge right here. And when I first started opening this port up, and blending it in to how I thought it should be, I thought, you know, already has a nice contour to it. If it wasn't for this fuel problem, I wouldn't bother doing this. And I thought, well, the heads make 500 horsepower anyway. Why bother? I'm not building a, a flat-out drive car. But guys, I have a problem. If I think something can be better, I have to do it. And the time this has taken me, I wish I didn't know this stuff. I've told you guys in other videos, but here's the, what I'm getting back to, guys. I get off track. I actually thought this bowl being made like this might actually help. And I thought, am I really doing something? Because if I thought, well, if the fuel's running up to the top, this lip being here would actually help that fuel break up or uh, atomized, whatever you want to call it. It would break the fuel up, I'll put it to you that way, and jump around. That was my theory. I was kind of afraid to actually take that casting off. And I thought, well, you know what? Here's what made me think about going the route that I went. I thought about what heads work well. Well, the best Ford head I ever saw, and you don't see them, and there's not a lot out there on them unless you keep up on basically the old type Ford performance, and that was the tunnel port head. And uh, when you see guys do these heads up, if you look at anybody that's porting heads, and machining any kind of head, I don't care if it's a Dart, World Products, AFRs, they don't have none of this in the bowl. Would it help to do something like that in the bowl? I don't know. I have no way of testing anything the way I'm doing it right here. So that means one thing. Them guys are smarter than me, and they know more than I do. So if they clean the bowl up and make it a nice bowl and keep it round as possible, which most of your good heads have. So, well, I'll put it this way. That's what made me do this because I thought all the heads I've seen that work real well are pretty clean in here. So, I will say this. I like the floor rough and I had my own theories on the floor of an intake and I never have done it the way that I think it would work but if you had the floor where it would chatter that fuel and I don't mean just by using a bit like this here I mean actually chopping it up and maybe even make it a little bit wavy I'd love to try that sometime people say ah that would puddle fuel that way no I don't mean have it that s severe but uh But uh, it's one of them deals where I'd like to try that someday, but now's not the time. Um, 
I just thought I'd run that by you guys because I think it's something that would work. But why hasn't anybody else done these things unless they have and found out that it didn't work and it's not talked about? So that leaves me at this. So what we're going to do is this here. I'm going to show you this one more time. That's the old pattern, how, and it's kind of faded out now, where the fuel was bunching up and emptying to one side. I'm just recapping this, guys. And it looks like a bloodbath in there. And the fuel's in all the wrong spots. And then that bowl, look how clean that bowl is, fellas. That fuel is staying all on the floor. And I did redo the floor before it was coming up on the bowl in here. And you guys can see it's not doing that anymore. So it's staying basically on the floor because I lowered the floor down and took that arch out. When I said I had an arch in it, I meant it had a, a, a sweep in it. Sometimes I don't explain things the way that I mean them. And then you guys are like, well, it has an arch in it. You'd probably think I mean in the floor like a dip, and I didn't. The floor is actually straight. And what I did do, guys, I forgot to mention, I didn't take this floor raised all the way to the back. I left it halfway. I did fill it in where the floor actually had the oval port, and it drops down there. I just leveled it out. Where it widens into the bowl right here, it's pretty nice. So... All I did, basically, is even the floor out, raise the roof as much as I could, where I, I don't want it to be any bigger than necessary, but I just tried to give it the tunnel effect. And I like to try to kind of keep the port the same where it comes in as the same size as this would be. But uh, back in the day... There's a guy that did heads, and he explained it pretty simple. He said you would like the intake bowl to actually be like a flower opening up, that you want it to get bigger and bigger. He never talked about percentages. But my theory was always the flatter and the more consistent you can keep that area to where it's coming out, the fuel's coming out in the air, the better. Now, the only thing with discrepancy that, to me, would be where it might shear the fuel. And that would be down bottom. And the way I do heads, most of the time, I will smooth some areas out around here. But I don't think a hearse to intake at all if you left it completely bumpy all the way through it especially when that fuel is jumping around going to the top I like the floor bumpy to keep it to break the fuel up but uh anybody has a 460 and has a stock uh port and maybe it's just clean them up for performance if you don't I don't expect anybody to do what I'm doing raising this floor so my theory is this, guys. I, I'll say this. I'm getting off base a little bit again. Sorry, guys. The way that fuel naturally comes to the top, the bumpier you could leave this all over the place, well, the better. Because what would happen in my book, it might just say, yeah, but it doesn't breathe as good that way. Well, it might not. But what it would do is give that fuel a chance to find itself jumping around and maybe lay there a minute and then break itself up. Might not be the most technical way of telling you guys that, but that's, that's the only way I can explain it. I'm not a technical guy, fellas. You know that. But anyway, guys, I'm going to cut this off. I just did this basically so I didn't knock this head out and then... You kind of forget where I left off. So I'm trying to do this in steps, trying to show why I'm doing why I'm doing it. And 
whoever thinks it's good, you can think it's good. Whoever thinks it's a mistake, that's fine. But uh, if I'm making a mistake, fellas, guess what? I'll be the one to pay the consequences. I'll be the one that has the vehicle that don't perform. And I'll know if it don't perform the way that I know how it would run with these heads, the way I would have originally had just put them on and cleaned the exhaust up. That's one advantage I have, guys. There's no guesswork. There is and there isn't. I know guys will say, well, you never know how something's going to run. Well, I've been very fortunate to hit something within two temps when I do it. And that's not even my stuff half the time. People used to ask me all the time, how do you do that? How do you know that? Well, it's just because you know the horsepower something should make when it's right. And when it's not right, you kind of know. Especially if you know the weight of the vehicle and the horsepower you have and most of the factors behind it. And uh, I can usually hit it within a couple attempts, like I said, on a time slip. And in a bad way, I can hit it within 25 to 50 horsepower, depending if it's something I did or something somebody's telling me about. Which, that's kind of a spread. 50 horsepower is a lot. I know that, guys. Well, I could do that. Yeah, you're right. You could, guys. So, my point is this. On a good day, with what I have, I think I know what the truck would return. And we've had other vehicles to run that number. And not just us, but my friends. And uh, sometimes I'll say we, and it's my friends. So, uh... That's a good thing. So I'll know if, if what I did to these heads helped it or hurt it. By I might get it dyno tested, guys. I don't know. I don't really like dynos. I have a chance to do that, so maybe I'll do that for you guys. Because I'm not the only one to um, have my way here. I'm trying to do stuff for you fellas on YouTube. I know some of you guys like dyno numbers, so we'll see. We'll take that bend once it's running and together. There's no sense in me jumping that. Uh, dicks right now, so um, that's another thing I just wanted to pass by you fellas. But here I go again, guys. I'm rambling, but it's almost like you guys are here in the garage with me and I'm talking to you, and uh, I kind of like that. But that's where I'm gonna leave it, fellas. And um, I hope if anybody does see this. You don't think, oh, well, I have to correct that in my head. If you have something that runs decent, you don't have a problem with it, there's nothing wrong with it. And you'll think, yeah, but I want to improve it. I don't know if I'm improving anything. I know how this is going, guys. It doesn't mean, like I said, when I put this together, is it going to have the same characteristics? So, uh... I wanted to tell you fellas that because I know some guys will watch a YouTube guy and they'll be like, oh, I got to do that. Because you think the guy knows something that you don't know. I'm experimenting myself here, guys. With this, I have never done this in a 460 head. But uh, I don't see how I'm going to hurt it. Will I? Did I? We're going to find out, fellas. So with that... I want to tell you guys thank you for uh, checking me out. Thank you for the new subscribers. Thank you to the guys who have been hanging in there with me through all the nonsense and listening to me babble. And uh, with that, I'm going to leave you guys. We'll have a good day, and God bless you. And thanks again, fellas.